Good afternoon and welcome to Matador News. I'm Carolina Naharo. And I'm Melissa Trahan. The Matador Sports Network is taking off without missing a beat. Matador News reporter Stephanie Murguia is sitting down with creator James Hewitt to talk about new sporting events and happening on campus. Hi, we're here with James Hewitt, creator of the Matador Sports Network. Thank you for joining us. Oh, we're totally not Can you tell us about what you guys have been working on all semester? We've been working on covering sport clubs. We're still in the uh, you know back and forth situation with the marketing department for athletics. So we've been covering the Matador sport clubs, and those include tennis, roller hockey, ice hockey, badminton, not ping pong. They like it to be called table tennis. Um, man, rugby, both men and women's soccer, both men and women's. I'm forgetting at least. 15 of them, but there's 30 plus clubs and we try to get all of them. Okay, and can you tell us some upcoming sporting events that you guys will be covering and that we can be able to look at on your webpage? Yeah, we're going to cover baseball, doubleheader this weekend. Um, the team they're playing escapes me, but they're playing at Reseda High School and they will be this Saturday, that's when the game is, and they're doing a tournament at UCLA for both badminton and tennis tennis. Okay, and if people want to be involved, they want to know how to be part of your um, network, how could they reach you and where could they go and apply? They can email me, or I guess email MSN, um, Matador Sports, Matadors, it's a double S, Matador Sports Network at gmail.com. You can email contribute to MSN at gmail.com, um, or you can go onto our WordPress site and um, Matador Sports Network .wordpress.com and look at who's involved in it and grab one of them when you see them on campus. Cool, thank you for joining us and back to you guys on the studio. Thank you, Stephanie. Worried relatives of missing passengers are waiting for answers about their loved ones. It's not clear what caused the ship to flip over, but some experts have suggested the ship may have hit an underwater obstacle. Authorities believe 278 people, many of them high school students, may be trapped inside the five-story ship, five -story ship. At least 18 people were found dead and 179 have been rescued. The ferry's captain is facing many questions about the accident. He was reportedly one of the first to escape the ship. The captain has said he's really sorry and deeply ashamed. Authorities are not sure if any of the missing passengers are still alive, but they're operating under the belief that there are still survivors. Officials from the U.S. European Union, Russia, and Ukraine say they have reached an agreement. After seven hours of discussion in Geneva, all sides have agreed to refrain from violence and provocative actions. All legally armed pro-Russian separatists are asked to disarm and turn control of buildings back over to authorities. U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel says the U.S. will send non-lethal aid to Ukraine's military. The United States continues to stand with Ukraine. And earlier this morning, I called Ukraine's acting defense minister to tell him that President Obama has approved additional non-lethal military assistance for health and welfare items and other supplies. Items include medical supplies, helmets, water purification units, power generators, and packaged meals. Ukraine has asked for military assistance, but Obama administration officials have declined the request after tension could escalate. Police in South Dakota say they have solved a 43-year-old cold case. Cheryl Miller and Pamela Jackson were driving home in May of 1971 after an end-of-the-year school party when they went missing. The women's bodies were found inside a car in a creek in Clay County. A bystander noticed a tire sticking out of the water in fall of 2013 as the creek dried up due to drought. Police believe both girls died in a car accident when they drove into the creek. Police say they have found no evidence of foul play or inappropriate conduct. Things are back to normal at Terminal 7. LAX experienced yet another bomb threat at 7.40 this morning when a man at the ticket counter said he had a bomb in his bag. The man was taken into custody by airport police and a bomb squad was called to check out a package he left behind. The Terminal 7 ticket at level was partially evacuated. After investigation, was, nothing was found. Evacuation ended an hour after the incident. The infamous Sriracha Sauce Factory may move to another location. 
After months of battling with the city of Irwindale, creator David Tran is exploring his options. Officials and business leaders from 10 states and several cities have offered to host the Sriracha factory. Irwindale residents complain about the odor coming from the factory, and Trand is worried about is worried other neighborhoods will complain as well. Trand is stressing his first choice is to stay in Irwindale, but the city council voted last night to designate the factory a public nuisance. California Community College students are not completing the two-year degree required to transfer to a four-year university as much as in previous years. Completion rates fell to 2.6 percent in a six-year period. Then than last year. Chancellor Bryce Harris said budget cuts forced schools to cut down the number of classes offered, leaving students with no option. Southwest College Vice President Lawrence Bradford says 93 percent of Southwest's incoming students are not ready for college-level work. Still, more than two million students are taking classes at California community colleges, making it the nation's largest two-year college system. Griffith Park's four-year mountain lion, known as P-22 has developed a sickness that may have been caused by rat poisoning. Biologist says rats eat the poison and coyotes eat the rats and then mountain lions eat the coyotes when they can't find deer. Los Angeles wildlife experts say the poison weakens the immune system and makes predators vulnerable to other illnesses. Experts say many contract, manage and scratch at the minch which open up wounds. They can cause a secondary infection, which will often lead to the death of an animal. P-22 was trapped and sedated, then treated by the scientists and returned to Griffith Park. And now we go live to the newsroom with Matador News reporter Co Courtney Wallace with more information about the lunar eclipse we experienced on Monday and other upcoming activities in the skies. Some of us stayed up late on Monday to watch the so-called blood moon eclipse, but if you missed it, we can expect another one in October. It was the first of four consecutive eclipses. CSUN astronomy professor Dr. Jan DeBias says this is a rare occurrence. We started till this past Monday where we had a total lunar eclipse and it was a like, eclipse that lasted about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, there will be another total lunar eclipse that we will see from here, and then one will be uh, October 8th of this year. And another total lunar eclipse will be next year on April 4th, and final one will be on September 28th next year. They all will be visible here, and they're all total lunar eclipses, and that's something that doesn't happen very often. CSUN students are fortunate enough to be able to see all four eclipses. And now back to you in the newsroom. While the number of people with diabetes continues to increase, Andrea Bautista reports that there's been a decrease in diabetes complications. A new study showing a, decrease, showing a decrease in complications due to type 2 diabetes. According to the study, complications like heart attacks, strokes, kidney failure, and amputations have been decreasing over the past two decades. Federal researchers say doctors have been getting better at controlling these risks with medicine to lower glucose, lipids, and blood sugar. Although these health risks, risks are decreasing the number of diabetic patients continue to grow. Portland, Oregon administrators will flush 38 million gallons of water from the Mount Tabor Reservoir. On Wednesday, surveillance video showed a 19-year-old urinating into the water. The Mount Tabor Reservoir is used as the city's drinking supply. The Water Bureau officials have turned off the pipes and are conducting tests to ensure there are no contaminations or health risks. The 19-year-old has been cited for trespassing and public urination. And now, with business, Erica Roberson with the latest on Chinese new online marketplace, Alibaba. After months of speculation, Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba has announced that it will go public on Wall Street instead of Hong Kong. Alibaba is compared to sites like eBay and Amazon, but this multi-billion dollar company has sales, um, has, two, uh, has sales more than, has sales, more, has more sales than the two companies combined. And it already has investors in a frenzy. Economists already project the e-commerce behemoth, whose platform includes banking, maps, online music service, TV and film production to be the biggest IPO of the year and possibly the biggest ever. In a ruling today, a 
federal judge denies the attorney's request that General Motors includes it, that General Motors issues a park it now order for three million recalled vehicles. The notices, which would have told owners their cars were too dangerous to remain on the road, will not go out. Instead, GM will tell drivers that they are safe as long as nothing is attached to the key when it's in the ignition. The lawsuit stemmed from 13 deaths that were proven to be in connection with faulty ignition switches. And now, to sports with Andrea Bautista. The NBA playoff is starting off with a clash this weekend. The LA Clippers are hosting the first of seven games against their rivals, the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors will have to go on without their center, Andrew Bogut, due to a broken rib. The Clippers have home court advantage throughout this series. The game will be held at the Staples Center and can be watched on ABC7 at 12.30 this Saturday afternoon. The Anaheim Ducks playoff opener ended with a 4-3 victory against the Dallas Stars. The Ducks led 4-0 midway through the second period. The goalie rookie, Frederick Anderson, had 32 saves in last night's game. Anaheim is the number one seed for the Western Conference Division. They will play game two of the best of seven series on Friday. And now we'll go to Erica Roberson with the latest on entertainment. One of Hollywood's most profitable directors is under fire in the midst of allegations of sexual abuse. The unnamed accuser says the X-Men director, Brian Singer, forced him to perform sexual acts in exchange for acting roles. The ledger, who was 15 at the time, says Singer promised the young actor major roles and commercial deals only if he gave in to his sexual demands. And he threatened to destroy his career if he didn't. All of this according to a civil suit filed in the U.S. District Court in Hawaii yesterday. Singer's representatives say that this is an attempt to get publicity when Singer's new movie is about to open and that they are confident that they will be vindicated. Miley Cyrus is feeling like a wreck wrecking ball after being admitted into the hospital Tuesday. The pop singer was prescribed antibiotics for a sinus infection last week and now is suffering from a, an extreme allergic reaction. A rep for the singer says her reaction can last anywhere from 5 to 27 days. The Bangers concerts for the next week will be canceled. Take a trip around the world at Carnival, where you can immerse yourself in different cultures. Jessica Hernandez has more in the newsroom. Thanks, girls. Students can enjoy free food and entertainment at CSUN's Carnival. The U is U's event, CSUN's, is celebrating CSUN's rich, diverse culture. The event will feature live music, dancers, henna booths, and tarot readings. There will also be a menu filled with a variety of ethnic foods. Today we're going to have various different performances, from dance performances to a poet laureate from Hawaii. He'll be performing twice today. The event will go from noon today to 7 this evening. Back to you in the studio. We'll definitely go check it out. Thank you for watching Matador News. I'm Carolina Naharo. And I'm Melissa Trahan. Goodbye. Goodbye.